A common trend I've noticed with the first wave of shoegaze groups is the release of only a handful of albums before disbanding. The golden trio of shoegaze, My Bloody Valentine, Slow Dive, and Ride all followed this trend and had all three broken up by the end of the 1990s. Today the group we'll be examining has a sparse catalog even by shoegaze standards. The name of the group is The Drop 19s and their story begins in Boston, Massachusetts in 1990. Greg Ackle was a student at Boston University. Though he was just a freshman, Greg had already had experience performing covers of songs by The Cure and New Order. It was evident that he was an inspired man who had some sense of what he wanted his music to be. One day at the university, Greg ran into a familiar face. It was Chris Roof, a fellow student whom Greg had performed with while in high school. The two reminisced about their days in high school and then floated the idea of forming a new band. This eventually came to fruition after the duo recruited Motohiro Yasu as lead guitarist and Steve Zimmerman as bassist. With Greg as vocalist and Chris as drummer, the four would call themselves In April Rain. A guest vocalist named Paula Kelly provided a counterbalance to Greg's voice. Paula would bring to the band her own experience in the Boston underground scene, growing up in a house where bands would perform in the basement. Although Paula was only supposed to perform on one song, she would eventually become a full-time member of the group. Regarding her joining of the band, Paula would later be quoted as saying, Greg and I were hanging out in his dorm freshman year. He whipped out his guitar and began playing a Cure song, I think. When he was done, I took the guitar from him and I don't remember what I played, but I know I was trying to one-up him. I guess it worked, or at least annoyed him enough to ask me to be in his band. The group went to work, spending their time experimenting with sound. They would change their name to Drop 19s and would record their demo Mayfield in 1991. The recording hasn't been remastered, and the only version that exists online are in poor condition. Despite this, I was impressed on hearing the record. Right off the bat, we can hear atmospheric textures and dreamy soundscapes. Greg and Paula's vocals blend quite well, which can be heard in tracks like Kissing the Sea. Mayfield and Shannon Waves are both instrumentals, but serve as a showcase for guitar interplay. I really love this demo, and I hope one day we will get to hear the remastered version of it. Apparently, I wasn't the only one who liked Mayfield, as college stations in the New England area began to play their music. They were getting invited to their first shows and even caught the eye of British publication New Musical Express. Realizing that they were starting to gain traction, Drop 19s quickly recorded another demo called Summer Session. In Summer Session, we hear this dreamy sound continue to manifest itself. Like Mayfield, the record is in poor condition, but I did enjoy it. Summer Session would attract more attention from the music industry, and record labels began to make their offers. Drop 19s would sign to Carolyn, a UK record label known for signing groups like Smashing Pumpkins and Primus. The band sat down and discussed their next course of action as they prepared to record their first studio album. Though they already had an album's worth of demo material under their belt, the Drop 19s opted to scrap the material and start fresh. Steve would comment that this decision was in part due to the backlash against shoegaze at the time. Between college classes, the band would go to Boston recording studio Downtown Recorders to record Delaware. Released on June 5, 1992, Delaware did not fail to live up to its anticipation. The record has kind of an emo and alternative rock sound, but with more fuzz and distortion. Some tracks like Delaware and Kick the Tragedy have more of a mellow sound. The latter spans nearly 9 minutes and was one of my favorite moments on the album. A mostly instrumental track, we hear a melancholic guitar riff repeat. Paula has a beautiful spoken word performance in this track halfway through. Other tracks like Baby Wonder's Gone and Aquarium have a more acoustic sound, with Greg and Paula's vocals taking center stage. On the other end, tracks like Rebury Member have a much noisier sound that reminds me of a track from My Bloody Valentine's Isn't Anything. Another highlight on the album is Winona. There's a Twin Peaks-like vibe I get from this track, and I feel like it had the potential to become a radio hit. There's a gap in 
One can hear the ambition and creativity in this record, and it was praised upon its release. As a matter of fact, Pitchfork would rank it number 45 on the 50 best shoegaze albums of all time. Following its release, Drop 19s were invited to perform at Vermin Stress Festival in Burlington, Vermont. It was a two-day, 15-band festival hosted by Sub Pop. While the performance was a success, the Drop 19s were eager to return to the recording studio before embarking on a tour. They would release the EP Your Aquarium in 92. It featured two versions of the track My Aquarium from Delaware, a cover of the Scott English song Mandy, and two original tracks. I quite enjoyed the EP version of My Aquarium, which has a beefier, heavier sound when compared to the version from Delaware. Mandy isn't that bad either. I never thought I would hear a shoegaze cover of this song, but somehow Drop 19's manages to make it their own. What I loved most about this track is the screaming vocals in the background. It's wonderfully unhinged. With Your Aquarium now out, Drop 19's went on their first tour across Europe. While the group was thrilled to be traveling overseas, the displacement seemed to create tension among members. Paula, in particular, felt left out, being the only girl in the band. She eventually became exasperated and left the group before their planned tour in the United States. Chris quickly followed, leaving two vacancies among the band. The Drop 19's recruited Megan Gilbert to replace Paula and Pete Copeland to replace Chris. Despite the change in bandmates, the show went on and Drop 19s would perform across the United States. They would even open for the Smashing Pumpkins during the North American leg of the tour. However, Moto would also leave for unclear reasons. One could speculate that it could have been in part due to roadblocks he uniquely faced, on one occasion not being permitted to cross into the Canada border. The bandmates were forced to play in Toronto and Montreal without him as he was sent to Detroit on a bus. Regardless on why Moto left, the band was in need of a lead guitarist. They would recruit Pete's cousin Justin Crosby to fill the spot. 60% of the band had not been around when Delaware and Your Aquarium was recorded, and it was now time for them to record a follow-up album. In the minds of Steve and Pete, a change in sound would be necessary to reflect the change in lineup. This idea manifested itself in Drop 19's second album, National Coma. The album was released in October 1993, less than a month after Paula's new band Hot Rod released their debut record. In National Coma, we hear the group stepping away from their shoegaze sound, moving towards a more watered-down alternative rock sound. Gone are Greg's reverberated vocals, replaced with a more aggressive, straightforward sound. Some tracks approach a heavy grunge territory, most notably the sinister song called Skull. It was late 1993 after all, a time when shoegaze was out of style and grunge was at its commercial peak. The shift in sound failed to resonate with Drop 19's audience, and National Coma was by most accounts a commercial and critical failure. Their tour to support the album saw mixed success, with Steve describing the experience as, quote, By that time, I remember people jumping around and dancing, but there were a lot of club shows where there was like 20 feet of nobody, and a crowd of people watching doing absolutely nothing but just watching. With tensions re-emerging, everything kind of unraveled after the tour. Pete recalled that, quote, We were like, thank God, when the tour was over in December. By January, Pete would get a call from Greg saying that Megan, Justin, and Steve were all leaving and that he was looking for new bandmates. Though the band pitched a few demos to the label London Polygram, the Drop 19s were all but fractured. Justin would describe the hectic nature of the band's lineup as musical chairs. Thinking it was time to rebrand, the group changed their name to Fidel and recorded a full-length album. The album never saw the light of day, and their only song that was ever released was called Randy Bean. Fidel ceased to exist, and the bandmates went their separate ways. Paula eventually found her own orchestra and would go on to pursue a composition career in film and television. Justin would follow a similar path as Paula, and some of his compositions can be heard in the hit 2000s TV series, Dexter. Surprise, motherfucker! 
Chris and Pete would continue to perform in various bands. Over the past 27 years, it has become increasingly evident that the Drop 19s were a promising and ambitious group that faded out all too soon. However, in January of this year, Greg would make an announcement on his Twitter page. It declared that Greg, Pete, Steve, and Moto would be spending the year recording a new Drop 19s album. Entitled Hard Light, the record is set to be released later this year. While there is no word yet on whether Paula will be coming back, Drop 19s have said to stay tuned for news regarding the future of the band. Personally, I would like to see a vinyl reissue of Delaware. It's exciting to know that the Drop 19s will be joining the ever-growing list of reuniting shoegaze bands. Appearing that the group is ambitious to return to the recording studio, we could be seeing a rebirth of the potential we could hear in Delaware. I am just one of many shoegaze fans celebrating their return, and I am looking forward to hearing their new album. Thank you everybody for watching the video. If you would like to see more shoegaze documentaries like this one, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Have a great day!